The next part of our course deals with the enemies within. Not an original title, I grant you, but at least I use the plural. In all seriousness, though, it's really easy to think about network security in terms of only playing defense against attackers that are outside our network. And, of course, that's obviously a very important part of network security, but the thing is, plenty of successful attacks have been launched from inside a network, and the thing is, we can have the most innocent little services and protocols used against us. That includes DHCP, that includes ARP, for gosh sakes. Even CDP, the Cisco Discovery Protocol, can actually be used against us in some ways. Telnet can be, and even just VLANs. Regular old VLANs can actually be used against us. And in this section, we'll see some examples of these attacks and also, of course, how to defend against them. We're going to start with something from your CCNA studies called port security. And we're going to go over the theory of this for a few minutes, and then I've got quite a few labs here on this subject. Because it is a basic security feature, but it's really overlooked. And what happens here is that port security uses the source MAC address of an incoming frame really as a kind of password. It's not a password that we go to the host and configure, but we are checking that source MAC address. Now, what are we checking it for and against? Well, the port that's receiving that frame, it's going to look at the incoming source MAC address and compare it to a list of secure MAC addresses that's kept there on the switch. And those secure MAC addresses can be learned by the port either statically, as you and I configuring them in, or dynamically. And we're going to see both in action. Now, if the source MAC address is found on that list, then the frame is processed normally because the address is considered secure. But if it's not, if it's not on that list, the frame is dropped and certain other actions are taken depending on the level of port security that's running on that port. Now, you're going to use the switch port port security command on a port to enable port security. And yes, that's saying port a lot in one sentence. But real world success tip here, please run show CDP neighbor to make sure the port you're about to work with is connected to the port that you think it's connected to. And I'll show you exactly what I mean here. Let me move that over just a little bit. We're going to use a couple of Cisco routers, R1 and R2, to masquerade as hosts here, host 1 and host 2. And the frames we're going to be examining are coming in from host 1. So I want to go on my switch, and I want to make sure that I am going to be configuring port security on the port that's connected to host one, which in this case is fast ethernet zero one, no problem there. But of course, this is pretty easy to pick out, right? You know, you're in a lab, you know, you know what you've got connected to what, but in a real world network, I would definitely run show CDP neighbor first. Cause if you're configuring port security on the incorrect port, two things are going to happen. Well, one's going to happen and one's not going to happen. First off, you're not going to get the desired security and on the port that you wanted to secure. And then on the other port that you didn't want to configure, you're probably going to end up shutting somebody down. So none of that is serving anyone well. So let's stay right here and look at what's going to happen on 01. Port security. And just to aggravate us, there is a hyphen there. We see some options here. We're going to look at all of those options in this video. At the same time, though, notice the CR. So switch port port security by itself is a legal command, and it is going to enable port security on that port or not. We have been rejected. Command rejected. You really don't see that very often. It's hard not to take a little personally. But here, we're not going to take it personally. But why is the command being rejected? Because this port is a dynamic port. Well, that's all the switch is telling us, so we ought to know a little more about what's going on there. What happens is that many Cisco switch models today, all of the ports on the switch are going to run in dynamic desirable mode by default, which means they are actively attempting to trunk. This is no longer true of all Cisco switch models, but it's true of many of them. So if you get this message, that's all it means is that the port is trying to trunk. The thing is, you can't run port security on a trunk port or a port that's even actively attempting to trunk. So what do we have to make that? Let's go back to our CSENT, CCNA studies. What kind of port do we need to make this then? We want it to belong to one VLAN and one VLAN only, and that is an access port. So I'm going to go with switch port mode access here. 
And that's really all I need to do. I'll show you the lab we're going to set up shortly. We've got to have somebody for host one to ping, and that's going to be host two. I'll show you the addresses here in a few minutes. But that's all we need to do right now because I'm going to leave that host in the default VLAN, and I know you know which VLAN that is. If you don't, we'll review it later in the section. But that's all we need to get started. And let's go ahead and run our first verification command, and that is show port security. And right now, we don't have anything. Hmm, because these dashes you see across the screen are dividers. So what's going on here? Well, I didn't put switch port port security on the port after I made it an access port. You'd be surprised how often you really trip up on that in real life, which is why I did it on purpose. That's my story, and I'm sticking to it. So now we've got port security enabled on that port. Now let's run show port security, and ta-da! Secure port, maximum secure addresses, current addresses, security violation count, and security action going there from left to right, of course. We see the one port we've enabled port security on. That one max secure address, that is the default number of secure max addresses that a secure, secure MAC addresses, thank you, that a port can have. So by default, it can have one secure address that it knows about. Current address is at zero. That's because we haven't configured one and it hasn't learned anything dynamically yet. yet. Security violations, we haven't had any yet. And security action shutdown. Now, please note this. It is really easy to look at the output of this command and say, oh, that port is shut down. It's not shut down. That's not the status of the port. It's the security action. That is what's going to happen if port security detects a violation. It doesn't mean it's happened yet. We are going to see it happen in the next couple of videos at least once. But again, please note this shutdown does not mean the port is shut down. This means the current security action is shutdown mode. We're going to go over all the modes in just a moment as well. We're going to hit it all. So let's go ahead and go back to our port. And we've got a couple of options here. Aging, MAC address, maximum, and violation. Some of these you're going to use often. One in particular you may never use, but I still want you to know the options. And we're going to take a look at all four of them on the board and in action at the very next video.